Hi, listeners. Welcome to the She Speaks Life podcast, a weekly encouragement where we share our God stories. I'm your host, Jamie Elizabeth, and I am so glad you are spending time with us today to listen. Hi, listeners. Welcome to She Speaks Life. I have a special guest with me here today. Her name is Cassie Sabin. And we have had an awesome morning so far. She has cut my hair. She's a fantastic hairdresser. I just love her. She is such a great woman of faith and you guys are gonna love her. So I just wanna welcome Cassie. Hi, Cassie. Hi, Jamie. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I'm so excited for you to share your God story, your testimony of how you saw God work in your life. And I just, just looking forward to how the listeners are all going to get encouraged and inspired by what you have to say. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. So I have two little girls, Mm -hmm. two and four, their names, Amelia and Sylvie. Um, they're precious, of course. And I have a husband, Nick. We've been together for about eight years and we moved to Austin a little over three years ago. And so my story kind of starts almost there. We actually were trying to move back to Cleveland about a year after we moved here. And we were trying to have all of our friends pray, help us find a job in Cleveland. We want to be by family. And little did I know that all my friends were praying me to Austin. It was good times. (laughs) Um, It was actually one of our friends, Ryan, who was saying, we just got approved to buy a house, talk to my broker. And he just pretty much drove Nick, my husband, crazy. So he was like, all right, I'll talk to your broker. And we'll... I can't even imagine being able to be approved to buy a house, but we'll try. So he did. Well, have you been to Austin before or was this a brand new area? Well, we had moved when we moved from Nashville, Tennessee to Mm -hmm. Austin. We moved right to the Austin area. Um, It was right near the domain. Mm -hmm. But no, we didn't know anything about the area. We had been here a little under a year. Okay. Yeah. So... We were like, I can't imagine being able to be approved because we are one income. So we're like, sure, we'll try to buy a house. So we got pre-approved, which was crazy. And then it was like, okay, well, I, I guess we'll start house shopping because we're we're here. You know, the, the whole getting a job in Cleveland thing didn't really work out. And um, we just wanted to be where God wanted us to be. And so we started searching and don't know if you people know this about the Austin area, but it is expensive, Mm -hmm. like crazy expensive. And we didn't want to be house poor. So it's like little miniature California it's turning Mm -hmm. into with, um, you know, Mm -hmm. Apple and Amazon and Google all being here. Um, So we really didn't think it'd be possible to find something in our price range. So when we were praying for a house, we wanted to be somewhere close to our church. And that was in Cedar Park, just a little bit north of Austin. And we searched for probably like, I don't know, two months maybe. And we found a few houses and we tried to put offers in on them. They didn't pan out. And then we found this adorable little house. It was in this cute little neighborhood. And I mean, I really loved the house. And it was at the very tippy top of our price range. Like it would be a big step of faith just to be able to afford the house payment. So we were like, okay, God. We know that you're calling us to Austin. Is this where we take our step of faith? And so our offer out accepted, which was crazy because in Austin, you have to like bid like over the asking price Mm -hmm. and we got approved. And then, you know, there was back and forth, whatever negotiations. And there was a few repairs that needed to be done, but the inspection went great. And we're going through the process and my husband just keeps on getting, I mean, he was really nervous. He did not feel comfortable and I, I didn't know what to do because I wasn't really hearing God's voice at the time. So I was just like, I don't know. I, I trust, I feel like we're supposed to go forward, but that's just, you know, that's just kind of what I'm feeling. I'm not having any crazy confirmation. So we were calling our pastors and it was like, well, if you're going to be house poor, don't do it. And I was like, well, we wouldn't quite be house poor, but it definitely wouldn't be going out to eat every night or anything. Yeah. We definitely would be stretching our budget right. to the max. So we kept on pressing in and kept on having conversations about it. 
And then, you know, I was like, I want to try to move forward. But if you do not feel comfortable with this, then your like comfort matters more to me than getting this house because another house will come whatever you want to do. Like, I trust you. Like, I trust you lead our family. And his mom, Nick's mom, my mother-in-law was in town at the time. And she woke up in the morning and she's sitting at the table, the kitchen table, and she starts sobbing. Mm. And we're like, did someone die? What is right. going on? Yeah. What is happening? <laughs> and she's like, Nicholas, I just feel so strongly that God is telling me that you are supposed to move forward with this house. Aww. And I was like, okay yay <laughs> i'm so excited i love this house and nick was like okay well if you're saying it and cassie's feeling it and god's telling you then let's let's just keep on going so fast forward about two weeks and it's the day we're supposed to sign the papers to get the house and our real estate agent calls us and he says there's a problem with the loan it's not the right type of loan. It's not a first time home buyers thing. Mm. There's like all these extras that you get for right. that certain type of loan. And so the loan wasn't going to be going through the way we thought it was going to be able to. We would have had to pay like 10 more grand out of pocket, which, oh we, my just, gosh. Yeah, yeah. which we absolutely did not have. So we sat on it. We're like, okay, well, we're going to, we're going to think about this and we'll call you back. And so we thought about it, we prayed about it, and Nick's like, that's not a good deal. I definitely don't want to do that. And I'm like, okay, like, I don't blame you. Like, this is crazy. This is clearly a shut door, God. Like, we just want to be where you want us to be. We called our real estate agent the next morning. Hoyt, you're amazing if you listen to this. <laughs> and um, we're like, hey, I'm sorry, but we can't go through with this house. And he felt so bad. But, you know, since we didn't back out earlier, we got to keep we got all of our money back, mm. um, you know, the earnest money and our um, any of the other little fees and stuff you have right. to pay. Um, we got all of that back, which if Nick would have backed out a few weeks previously, all that would have been gone. Wow. Yeah. So we're telling Hoyt, nope, we can't go through with this house. It's, it's not a good deal. And he's like, I understand. He's like, well, you know, let me know if you guys want to start viewing houses again or if you want to take a break. And... We're like, okay. So we're a little bit sad, but we're like, okay, very clearly a shut door. No big mm -hmm. deal. And I walk inside. We had the phone call outside away from the children because it was a very serious conversation. Mm -hmm. And they like to scream and yell and all mm -hmm. the cute children things. And, yes. um, They're so, adorable, by the way. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, yeah. I think so too, but I yeah. know I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> so we go back inside and I'm like, Nick's like doing something in the bedroom and I'm like, I'm just going to hop on the computer really quick because I love house hunting. It's the most fun ever. <laughs> and so I open the computer up and I just search house in Cedar Park for sale. And we were looking for something which was like nearly impossible, as I'm sure you can imagine. Yeah. So this house pops up that we're sitting in right now mm -hmm. and it was $26,000 less. And it was, I mean, we can almost throw a baseball to hit our church. And if you remember, that was my prayer to be close to the church. Yes. And I was like, Nick, I'm screaming for him. Nick, <laughs> get out here. <laughs> so he comes out here. I'm like, I think this house might be clickbait, but it, it looks so good. I want to go see it. <laughs> clickbait. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Because they're, that's there yeah. too. Because yeah. people just outbid each other. It's right. craziness. So I was like, I'm calling Hoyt. I'm like, Hoyt, I want to see this house. Mm. I'm like, this is crazy. So he's like, cool, I can show it to you guys at 3 o'clock this afternoon. And I'm like, okay. And Nick's like, well, I'll be at work, but go ahead and go and look at it. And, you know, his mother was in town still. So she was going to come with me. And we went here, and, I mean, the backyard, it's like on a third of an acre in Cedar Park, which is, like, also another impossible thing because all the lots are, like, postage stamp size. Big developments. And mm -hmm. this was, like, the last, <laughs> like, old school kind of neighborhood. No cookie-cutter houses on this street. Mm -hmm. It's very, like, this house was built in 79. But we walk in the house. I mean, the worst thing about it is, like, oh, we need to replace this bathtub. But, you know, no big deal. Right. We can do that. And the house had been on the market for 13 days, which another little tidbit about Austin housing market is that houses get bought like the first day. So it felt mm -hmm. impossible. And I'm like, let's just put in an offer. Like, let's do it. I love it. You know, I FaceTimed Nick while we were here and he's like, cool. I love it. Go, let's move forward. He hadn't even seen the house. And he's like, let's just put it on. Yeah, let's do and, it. Yeah. And yeah. so point our realtor was like, well, since it's been on the market for 13 days, we can just put in an offer at asking price, mm -hmm. which once again, impossible. <laughs> and the lady 
like we put in our offer and the lady wrote us back the next day. It was a Friday and she's like, I accept your offer. Mm. And we're like, holy cow. Yeah. Are you serious? Like this house is happening right now. It's like 30 seconds from the church. It is so cute. It's on the smaller side, but I don't mind less to clean. Mm -hmm. And the inspection, there was like one or two little things that the people paid for. They paid for our first year of home warranty. I mean, wow, this house is, yeah, Yeah. it's literally impossible. Yeah. I mean, this house seems impossible. And this house is so super cute. I mean, it's just like great size. Your backyard is enormous. It's just adorable. Great location. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. And, um, it's it's such a blessing and if if god didn't give us this house i wouldn't be able to do nearly as much as i do for the church i mean Mm because i'm right there i'm able to just pop on over yeah for every little thing to serve with Mm -hmm. um so yeah it's been amazing yeah so tell me a little more about maybe ministry life and all that okay yeah so since i'm so close to the church i've really made myself accessible i do mops which is like twice a month we have to attend whatever the function is like a mops morning or a play date but I'm also a table leader so I you know I reach out to my table and then I serve with the youth on Wednesday evening so that's every Wednesday Mm -hmm. evening from like 6 to 8 30 that I'm over there and then I I recently started doing team restore training which is kind of like a really cool kind of niche ministry um, Mm -hmm. that just encourages people to have, you know, vertical conversation with God. They just help people find God's voice and it is the most fun. Talk a little more about your your spiritual journey. Where were you at as far as Mm -hmm. just your relationship with the Lord during the time that you got this house? Where did God reveal himself to you? And also... Maybe how you got to the point where you felt like God was leading you to ministry. So we moved into this house in August and the June beforehand, we had um, Pastor Benny Perez at our church and he spoke a word to me and my husband. He said, he said something along the lines of, you are in a season of acceleration and tremendous favor and he's going to he said something about moving mountains over the next year and so nick and i were just kind of like okay awesome what does that mean (laughs) so i mean between june and august is when all of this crazy house story happened and so when we moved in here in august i was like i feel like this house is such a gift from god You know, I was already doing like little devotionals in the morning Mm -hmm. while all of this has been going on, but I really started to press in more. Mm -hmm. After I got this house, I was able to open up, you know, Mm -hmm. now that I have a home Mm -hmm. that God gave me, like I want to use it to open up my home to have friendships and, you know, invite people in. And so I started off mop training. Actually, Jamie, you kind of pulled me into mops. Like, yeah. Cassie, you'd be great for this. Come on in here. And I'm like, what is mops? Yeah. And so, you know, there was a few women that were interested in leadership with mops. And so we had like a little, a couple of meetings when we were trying to figure out what mops would look like at Expression Church. And those same women, you know, we were all talking. And I was like, well, do you guys want to come over? I live like 30 seconds away from the church. And so I had a group of like five moms come over and my whole life, I've never had a big group of friends. So this Mm. was, yeah, it was so fun. Um, So it was really special to just see my home filled with like, you know, there was like seven or eight children and like five moms (laughs) and my house is like 1100 square feet. So um, it was cramped, but it was so much fun. And I, I know that having those relationships, it was like iron sharpens iron. And it really is what just threw me into this acceleration, that word that was spoken over us. You know, they just encouraged me and we prayed together Mm. and, you know, talked about all those ups and downs and just like really partnered with each other on life. And then we started mornings that following January and I started another Bible study with another woman from our church. And it was just like, I just kept on getting hungry and hungrier for God. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I couldn't get enough time in my Bible. Mm -hmm. And and so just through that, that hunger and that diligence, I Mm -hmm. mean, I was like spending 
I'm sorry, children, but I was spending like an hour a day mm-hmm. in my Bible and Bible yeah. studies. Yeah. That's kind of, that's like our, our alone time with God. You know, that's yeah. our me time and yeah. you're spending it wisely yes. by spending it with God. <laughs> yeah, so that's sure. awesome. Yeah. It was really great. And I still continue this now. It's kind of, you know, changed into something different. I feel like it's always like a morphing time with God. It goes to prayer and then like listening and more devotionals. I actually just looked on my YouVersion app and I've done 92 devotionals in the past year, <laughs> which if you guys don't wow. already do it, um, yeah. those YouVersion devotionals are amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The YouVersion Bible app and it's really yeah. fun. There's yeah. so many great devotionals on there. So yeah, I feel like just through all of that time with God is what has drawn me into ministry and I felt him pulling me certain directions and Mm -hmm. just trying to listen and to be obedient just spending quiet time with God is probably the thing that helped draw me into ministering to other people yeah 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 Wow. Thank you so much, Cassie. What an amazing story about the power of prayer and how we just first and foremost just ask God to lead us and how he showed you the right home and he closed the doors on the other homes that weren't the right one. And he really gave you guys the desire of your heart. And you got to see that through your prayer and I just love hearing that inspiration, that encouragement. It just reminds us to just take any of our concerns, any of our wants and our desires and just talk to them, listen and lean into them all through prayer because that's our way of having a dialogue with our Lord, right? So I just love everything about the prayer that you had going through this whole uh, process of getting a home and how much God blessed you and not only blessed you with a home, but that you wanted to take it back to God and say, you blessed me with a home. Now I'm going to bless these women who come to my home and we're going to gather and we're going to praise your name. We're going to pray in your name and we're going to expect breakthrough in your name in this living room because that's exactly what God did for you. So I just love the obedience part of taking the blessing back to God and just telling him thank you and then being hospitable and opening your home with these women and creating relationships. So thank you you so much, Jamie. This was so much fun. I, I really hope that it just encourages your listeners and that they're blessed by it. It definitely will. It was fun. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for listening, listeners, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for listening today. I trust that God has encouraged you through this message. For more information on this ministry and to access free downloads, please visit my website at jamieelizabeth.com and sign up. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Jamie Elizabeth She Speaks Life. That's J A Y M E Elizabeth She Speaks Life. Until next time, my friends, I pray God reveals Himself through your own life story.